yeah, obviously awful trip start to finish. Uh, <laughs> started with a three hour delay on the flight and uh, ended with a 38-3 loss or whatever the debacle ended up being. Um, two factors, obviously, tons of credit to Miami and Florida. They got, they got great players, they got great coaches, they did a great job. There's certainly many instances in the game where physically we got, we, we, we couldn't block them, they could block us, we couldn't tackle them, they could tackle us. We, they protect, you know, if you, you watch the protection of the quarterback, their guy had all the time in the world, our guy had enough time to get the ball off, we didn't get sacked, but we didn't have all the time in the world. So tons of credit to my Florida, not taking it away. That being said, disappointed um, in our execution, not the whole game, but certainly at times, they're good enough on offense that if we're not in the right position, we didn't have edges to our defense, which is doesn't matter what defensive scheme you run, you got to have edges. There's times that the ball bounced and there was no one there to turn it back in, and we we had players in position to maybe make a tackle. Um, happened on the opening kickoff. We had a good kick, we had good coverage, and you have one guy that doesn't set an edge, and you got a fast Miami Florida player, and all of a sudden it's it's a big play right away. So. Um, too many times, like we talked last week, somebody asked a question about the opener of trying to do too much, trying to make plays, trying, you know, you're, you're a non-Power 5 team, you get to play in Miami, Florida, and, you, you know, everything you read about, you know, all the money they're spending buying the best players in the country, which, you know, they have a lot of really good players. And they've, like I said early when we, you know, we talked last spring, like they've got the NLL figured out, they've got a great system going in place and they're growing it and they're they're taking you're not doing anything wrong it's not fair yes it's fair that's the ncaa rules and they're they're at the front end of doing it the right way of getting you know getting a really good transfer offense lineman from university of alabama who doesn't want that kid miami Ohio would take that kid like that's not wrong it's not wrong with that kid he's a good kid he's a really good player now he's in your program um but we ran around chickens with our heads cut off too much on defense at times which created opportunities for really elite athletes to make big plays and they took advantage of them just like we said and UMass will do the same thing uh, offensively too many times we did not execute to the level that we're caping them and making them earn it whether it be technically whether it be what we saw up front whether it be what we saw in the backfield um, so too many too many mental and you're always gonna have mental mistakes in the first game so it's not but too many mental mistakes when you're playing a team that talented you can't you, you got to play cleaner football which we didn't so disappointed as I told the team like hey my only job is to get you to play your best football. You didn't play your best football. Again, do I think, you know, do I think you win the game if you play best football? I don't know, not based on how lopsided the score is, but do I think it's certainly more competitive for longer? You know, it should be 13 to three at half, you know, if we have a good end of half defense, a scenario, um, but we make mistakes and it's 16 to three, you know, so just too many opportunities left on the field. And again, you expect that week one, but we had more than, more than I expected. We, we had practiced very good. We knew what we were doing coming in. Whoever asked last week about the moment and Miami and the energy and like there's times kids try to make plays. Got, did things that they have, you know, we have some experienced players that never make certain mistakes. They made certain mistakes as they're trying, trying to make a play. I mean, it's, it's evident on tape. So um, we have a long ways to go as a football team. That's obviously a great opener from what you can do and what you can't do. All right, we know we got to run the football. That's going to be an emphasis. We're going to run the football this weekend. That's the plan. We got to run the football um, more more efficiently. I know they got good players, but we got to be able to run the ball better than we ran the ball. We couldn't run at all. So we got to defend the run better. We pride ourselves in defending the run. We didn't defend the run at all. Is Miami a really good running offense? Okay, maybe they are, but we didn't play the level. So it starts there. If they can run the ball for tons of yards and you can't run at all, you're you're in for a long evening, and we're in for a long evening. Question. How difficult is it to gauge future uh, production or success for your team uh, after playing a team like Miami, where they're so physically gifted? Uh, you know, to a certain extent, you don't know how much is, you know, just they're physically better, and and uh, how much is uh, uh, fixable assignment, missed assignments, and things that you uh, maybe can do something about. Yeah, there's certainly probably going to be some things we can do moving forward that we didn't do very well Friday night. Maybe that's because we we play better and execute better and think better and play better technique. And then maybe some of it is maybe we 
the guy across from us won't be as talented. You, you don't, you know, we don't really bank on it. We just say, hey, you're playing Miami. You didn't ex you. We were trying to run the ball. We didn't run the ball. Why not? Okay, you look at it, each play, why it didn't happen. So time will tell. You don't necessarily worry about it. You just worry about the, what did Miami earn? What did Miami not earn? You know, what were we in position to make the play and didn't make the play? Okay, do you have the wrong guy there? Do you have to put somebody there that can make the play? That's all part of the process, all right? Or he wasn't in the right position. Well, you got to put a different guy there that can get the right position. Or is it just, okay, he can, we can fix this and he can be in the right position this week and we can clean up that mistake. So there's all those factors of, you know, and it's, it's case by case basis. So um, it's hard to gauge off your opener for a lot of reasons. It's hard to gauge when you, you play a team as talented as Miami. That makes sense, but you know we don't look. We just look at hey, did we did we take the right first step? Did we put our body in position to put force? Yeah, did we get whooped? Okay, maybe that was we just were overwhelmed, you know, genetically. But no, we didn't take a good first step. We didn't put force through them. So maybe we could have tackled them. Maybe we could have made that block. Maybe we could have made that play. But we didn't do the thing. So then we got to work on doing the things that we know we're capable of doing. Coach, <clears throat> I'm guessing you saw that quote that came out from Brett last week. Just wondering if you had any thoughts uh, when you saw that start making the rounds going a little bit viral on the internet. Yeah, no, I did not see the quote. I heard about the quote. I had no thoughts when I heard about it. I still have, like, everybody in our locker room, players, coaches, equipment people, train, like, we're going to my floor to win a football game. Like, that's the expectation. Like, the expectation isn't to – go ever play a game and well we can't do this we're disappointed in the outcome not only that we didn't win but it was as lopsided and as dominant it was they dominated us like that's anybody watched it it was we physically got dominated all right and and so that's bitterly disappointed you know I don't I don't do much in the media or anything in the media so somebody had to tell me I didn't hey did you see Brett's quote I'm like I didn't hear like last night I like I got plenty of things to worry about other than so. But to me, it's not. He's a competitive kid, and I want everybody in our locker room to think that we're going to go wherever we go. We're going to go and try to win a football game. We're going to go try to show them what we're all about. That's that's the goal. And um, obviously, we didn't do a very good job on Friday night. How'd you come out injury wise? Um, Cold Iron suffered a suffered a pretty major injury. He's probably done for the season, which is not not awesome because he's a really really he's a great runner, great blocker, great. He's great in protection. He's a run blocker. He's a great receiver. So he, he does so many different jobs. So very disappointing for him because he's an unbelievable kid and has poured so much in this program. And you know, kind of have this happen. His his last goal round is kind of kind of sad. Just feel bad for him. Um, but our net, we're 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 beat up physically. Um, nothing else long term. There may be some guys that can't play. Well, it's too early to tell. We're doing yoga as we speak so uh we're, we're trying to get our buys but it was obviously it was a physical physical whooping we took on both sides of the ball so our guys our guys our guys aren't aren't feeling great right now but that was the only thing long term um that 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 was disappointing obviously what are your uh perspectives on getting the extra day and you know playing on friday versus saturday and now having kind of that extra day to rest yeah like you said, love it personally i loved it gave us you know gave us another day uh particularly with that long a trip and particularly with you know it was a taxing trip we were you know we got diverted on the way down there we were on we we're in west palm beach for three hours on a runway sitting there and it's it's tiring to travel anyways and then you play a night game and then you get back really late you know or really early in the morning so having that extra day one for our kids you know just it was pretty 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 rough couple of days um giving them an extra day of rest and recovery and all that uh and then obviously an extra day of preparation you know we did more yesterday on a sunday than we would normally do on a sunday just because we we had an extra day to get going and prepare so we had more stuff more stuff ready to go so from 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 a healing up standpoint it's huge especially after that physical game and then just from preparation so if, I wish you had wish you had eight days every week would be wonderful coach what can you tell us about UMass yeah interesting um much different obviously they showed that week one than last year um they went to New Mexico State who had a really good year last year and I think won seven games and won a bowl game and uh, New York State's a really physical smash mouth Jerry Kill football team, um, and they've got they've got a they've got a really good athletic quarterback from Georgia Tech who ran around and made tons of plays in that game. And 
can can make big plays with his arm, can make big plays with his legs. He's he's a really good runner, but he can run. I mean, he can make he can go 50, 60 yards. He's big, strong, and athletic runner. Um, they got a really high end tailback that played good in both the New Mexico State game and the Auburn game. Um, stiff arm and Auburn guys and. Um, so they do a really nice job running the football. They do a really nice job with all their motions. There's a lot of pre-snap movement um, to try to mess with who's supposed to be in what gap and who's supposed to be the edge of your defense. And um, obviously, that's something we're going to we're going to have to prepare really hard for. They got a really high-end receiver um, who I think is also a transfer from Arizona. Um, so they have some they have some high-end skill guys. And then defensively, they're very aggressive. Um, they run, they play north and south, they hit, um, they love to pressure. Um, last year they pressured a lot and gave up some big plays with their pressures, but they also made some big plays. This year, as they continue to prove they had transfer quarter from Arizona, they, they, they have gotten after them in New Mexico State pretty good. They caused turnovers, they had a pick six, they had another pick that set up a score against New Mexico State. And it, it similar to what they were doing last year, just another year with the new coach and Younger guys getting older and a couple transfers and a pretty fast, twitchy, physical group on defense that's really aggressive and brings a lot of different pressures from a lot of different places with a lot of different people. So um, it'll it'll be a good, good challenge for us offensively. You only had one receiver with more than two catches. Uh, how do you feel about playing uh, against somebody else, anybody that's not – the Miami Hurricanes about uh, expanding that into, uh, you know, a variety of, of receivers of them getting some yeah. separation and getting open. Yeah, we got a number of guys. I thought our receivers did well. I mean, it, it is pro our passing game wasn't very good as a product of everyone, running backs, receivers, quarterbacks, tight end, like receivers. It was everybody. It was not, but we had guys that got open. We had guys even against Miami. We got a good group of receivers, and they're going to be challenged again this week. Uh, UMass plays a lot of man coverage, like Miami played a ton of man coverage. Uh, and we got, a we got a bunch of guys, some guys even, I know late it meant, but still, you know, came. Donald makes a great catch, and Javon Trace makes a great catch. I know they called him out of bounds, but still a great catch. I mean, regardless whether his, you know, thought his toe touch, but regardless, it's still a great catch, regardless, a good throw, good catch. Um, so we have we have capable guys there. Um, so we have to execute better in the pass game and at all facets from protection to route running to decision making to throws, everything. Are we good? Uh, you had a couple uh, people that had some positive things. Uh, Dow had the interception and your punting game uh, turned out pretty well. What can you tell us about those those two individuals? Yeah, besides the opening kickoff, our ST was really good. Um, our punt team kept flipping the field. We put them on the field. We punted way too much, so that was bad. But that doesn't take away from the execution. Bevelheimer first game punting um, did a tremendous job, and our coverage was fan. They have a really good returner back there. Our coverage unit did. I thought we all kicked it on the one. I, when we banged that one was a phenomenal punt, but our guys got down there and actually got a negative return. We they, they had a great kickoff guy, so. He kicked out of the end zone, but the one time he didn't, we had a really nice return. Kevin Davis, we did some good things in front of him and got an explosive return again. Doesn't mean a lot in a lopsided game, but in a non-lopsided game, that return the kickoff out to the 35 is a big, big, big play for you as far as field position. Then obviously, Graham goes out there and makes a 48. You know, I always talk about trying to get the kicker an easy one early in the year. <laughs> You know, get his head up, get his confidence. Not that Graham lacks confidence because he's a great kicker, but just you want to, you always think, get the guy off to a good start. And, you know, a couple years ago, it was a 47 yard against Minnesota's first ever kick. And this year, it's 48 yards at Miami. So uh, that, again, great kick. And again, doesn't mean a lot in that score. No, but in a tight game, those. Those field goals win games. 48-yard field goals are big plays. So, again, obviously not impactful Saturday, but our opening kickoff team, obviously, and, again, we had good coverage. We have a guy, you know, again, trying to do too much and trying to be a little bit over-aggressive, and he just got to be contained, and he will get that correct, and we'll get that correct. But other than that opening kickoff, RST did a really nice job. Punted way too much. That's a product of our offense not getting it done. Um, but there was, there was a lot of positive. Dow had a good football game. You know, he there's, there's, there's a number of guys on defense that played well, but – we all ran around chickens with our head cuff a little bit and tried to do, we had a lot of guys trying to make plays. And then again, the score in the second half, particularly, you know, trying to go make a play to win the game because our offense isn't moving the ball. So it's all works together, but Dahl had a really nice play in the interception uh, and, and was all over the field like he always is.